Hi guys, my name is Rick Bradbury. Welcome back to the studio. I'm a commercial and portrait photographer based out of Stockport in the Northwest. And for this video for Pixapro, uh, we're going to be comparing a couple of light modifiers. Now I'm going to include one of my own modifiers that I already have in the studio, which is just a standard reflector for a City 600 Pro, just as a um, control or a starter. It's a hard light source, obviously direct light. And we're going to see difference in quality when we move up to these modifiers. Now, the modifiers that Pixapro very kindly sent over to me, because um, believe it or not, I don't have every single modifier that they have. They've got a lot of them. It's cool, but I can't have nowhere to store them all. Anyway, the two modifiers that we've got are the 160 centimeter or 63 inch, I believe, silver parabolic umbrella here with its diffusion panel. Um, these are great. Um, a great price point for getting into a larger modifier as well. Um, very flexible and some people discount umbrellas completely and they can be a very, very good modifier. And that's that there. Now that fits onto a light like a typical umbrella modifier would. And we also have a carry case that it came in as well. Um, the diffusion panel just fits in there. So it's nice and easy to pack away with it being an umbrella essentially. Uh, and chucking in your car, taking on location, taking to a rented studio, that's all good. Now, um, same really for this fella here. Um, we have the 150 centimeter Easy Open Octa. Comes with its own carry case, which I'll show you in a moment. Fairly similar in size. Um, I think it's 59 inch, 150 centimeters. Um, slightly different way that it goes together. We have a inner baffle sheet um, of diffusion and the outer diffusion panel there. Of course, you can remove one, the other, all. You can take the cover off that one as well. And we also have a grid which is in the case. Now, the way that this mounts onto lights is via a usual Bowens mount, which for the Pixapro light series, the Storms, the Lumis, um, the City series, or even the Peekers and the City 300 in brackets as well as the speed lights, that's the mount that we're used to really seeing. Okay, so that's cool. Now, the carry case that it comes with is here. So a nice carry case for storing in the studio on shelves. I just use um, garden shed hooks on a wall in the office that's over there. And it's easy enough to throw around, carry over your shoulder and carry in a vehicle as well on the way to a location shoot. So we're going to compare these two modifiers and see the different quality of light through their different uses um, as well. Because you can just point a modifier directly at someone or you can use it slightly differently by feathering the light. You can have an inner baffle in, removed, outer diffuser on or removed and it gives a different look. So you can get a few different looks with both of these modifiers and we'll take a look at those coming up shortly. Now, the way that we're going to compare these two is we'll get a model into the studio who I will introduce shortly and we're going to have her seated in the same kind of pose, same outfit against this same background the light will be set up and modifiers in the same distance. I'll get it measured um, that way there. And um, so we've got a comparable and controlled test. And we're going to shoot the images um, coming into Lightroom in black and white. Now, you may think it's a bit strange. Well, why black and white? Why not color? Well, I want you guys to see what these modifiers look like. Um, light, highlights, mid-tones, shadows on the subject, as well as the effect on the background, purely from a black and white perspective. I just want you to see the highlights, mid-tones and shadows only. No color information, no distracting bright colors which may be on clothes, um, in someone's hair or what have you. As cool as that is, for comparing modifiers, the good thing to do is just shoot in black and white and just get a feel for how open shadows are, how bright and specular the highlights are, how hard, how soft the light is. So, let's get to work and let's get shooting. And as you can see, we have a model who has joined us, Aries. Did I get that right? Yeah, you did. Oh, wait, cool. Okay. I'm usually terrible with names. Um, so thank you very much for coming into the studio today. 
Um, now, what we're going to be doing is shooting some example images again in black and white. I explained why in the introduction. It's just so we're looking purely at highlight, midtones, and shadow, and we're not looking at any color information. As cool as the hair is, <laughs> not right now. Uh, not right now. Uh, we'll look at that uh, later on uh, using gels and such. Um, anyway, so um, the first shot that we're going to have a look at is a hard light shot. Um, which is using a bare reflector from a City 600 Pro. Um, it's a hard light and that's because it is small relative to your subject or to areas here. Remember, in terms of quality of light, the larger the light source relative to your subject, the softer the light quality will be. Smaller, it will be harder. As a result, you're gonna get more deeper shadows, which we'll see in a moment, especially in black and white, and that's why we're doing black and white. Uh, and we'll see more specular highlights. So we'll see it on the nose and cheeks and so forth as well. And you'll see a brighter highlight usually in the eyes also. So I'll take the first shot. Now you won't see me as I'm shooting because I've only got so much room in here and my camera's all the way over here. Uh, they can just look at me yeah, I'll just leave you on set, shall I? There we go, right, okay. Um, so um, first shot with the hard lights. So that's great area. Just looking towards that no entry sign. You're not allowed in, no entry. <laughs> Well, that didn't fire, did it? What happened? Fail. Let's try again. There we go. Boom. That one fired. And we should see, there we go. A black and white image, which is very, very deep in shadow. Now, if we zoom in on the image here, there we go. Um, we'll see very deep shadows. It's not particularly open on the cheek. A hard shadow line there. And we're doing this just to give a control shot. So I'll come back on set. Um, just to give a control shot, just so we can see a start point. Now you may um, get hard light if you're, well you will actually get hard light if you're shooting with a speed light. That may be all you've got. And then when you go to larger modifiers, like these ones that we're gonna be doing um, in a moment, you'll see a much different quality of light, especially on the skin, open shadows on the cheek, and of course the influence that it has on the background as well. Look at the texture in the background, um, the ripples, which unfortunately happen on paper in here, humidity. Um, and the shadow that it casts as well. So we'll change the modifier out and we'll see what difference it makes. First one is the 160 centimeter parabolic umbrella, which is this thing. It's a monster. That's bigger than me. Yep. <laughs> so we'll change this out. Right. Okay, you saw the deep hard shadows with the hard light source. Uh, and by the way, there is nothing wrong with shooting with hard light. Um, some people out there may say you should really shoot portraits with soft light. Depends on the feel that you want from the portrait, um, what the story is and the narrative for the shot. Sometimes hard light works. Maybe there's texture on the clothing um, that you want to see, texture on the background that you want to see, so it works great. Now, what we're gonna see next with the 160 centimeter, which is I think 63 inch, well, I have no idea. I'm winging that one. I'm not here for <laughs> I think it's a 63 inch um, silver parabolic umbrella. Now, um, I've got this set up on the City 600 Pro here, um, bare bulb, um, just so it has best chance of filling the umbrella versus having the standard reflector, which hang on, we saw before, um, which is here because it channels the light a little bit and restricts it to the center um, of the umbrella so it's not using the full. Um, inner panels on the umbrella. Um, we've metered it at f11 again. Um, so we'll be shooting at f11 for all of these. So everything is the same other than obviously the change of modifier, change of quality of light. So let's take a look and see what this fella, which is rather large, okay, looks like. Okay, here we go. All right, so we're looking towards the side again. Let's see what we get. Thank you very much, perfect. Ooh, oh, it's a fashion shoot, there we go, two shots. Boom. Light recycles nice and quick. There we go. Now, if we have a look at Lightroom, look at the difference in quality, okay, on the highlights. And if we um, compare two images side by side, you can see a dramatic difference once Lightroom figures out what it wants to do. There we go. Okay, dramatic difference in the shadows. You've got a very, very defined hard light shadow line here on the neck, and it's a gradual shadow to highlight transition with mid-tones here 
because it's a larger source, open shadows here on the cheek, and look at the change of the catch light. It's a more broader, wider highlight of the eyes versus a specular highlight of the eye here. So very, very different. And now we're going to see less of a difference when we look at the, um, the next modifier, uh, I'll come back onto camera, which is the 150 centimeter Easy Open Octa. Now it's, okay, 160 centimeters, 150, fairly similar in size. The larger the source, the softer the quality of light is, but we're talking probably marginal changes and differences there. Certainly with the diffusion panels, the bigger change that I'm expecting to see is maybe um, slightly smoother highlights possibly because you've got the inner baffle on the 150 centimeter octa and it's outer diffuser, whereas this is just this one single diffusion sheet, okay, bouncing off silver reflective material inside the umbrella. But let's take some shots and let's see what it looks like. Right, okay, next one. <laughs> Okay guys, welcome back onto set. Now, um, as you can see, we've changed the modifier out to the 150 centimeter Easy Open Octa. Uh, reason why it's called Easy Open is it opens up like an umbrella modifier does. Um, so you don't have to mess around with flexible rods or speed rings, which ping out of the location holes and hit you in the thumb and make you swear. Not that that's ever happened to me, anyway. Right, um, so we'll see what this one looks like. Again, very similar in size. Of measured distance, it's five foot distance um, from Aries. Did I get that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, and we'll see whether there's much difference between the quality of light that we got with the 160 centimeter parabolic silver um, umbrella compared to this. Okay, right, let's take a look. So I've come back to the camera. Again, we've metered this at F11. F11. Great stuff. Boom. And we'll see what we get in Lightroom. Oh, there we go, it has converted it to black and white. It came in in colour there for a moment, right. And we'll see what we get. And now if we look at the catch lights of the eyes here in Lightroom, we can see, again, big, big highlight there. Okay, um, nothing specular, so it's not a small source. So very, very similar, nice open shadows. Transition from uh, highlight to shadow and mid-tones on the neck. So a nice quality of light and fairly similar, if not very, very similar to if we compare the two, yeah. there we go. Oh, we need to be in library mode to compare. Sorry about that, folks. One moment. Okay. We have a quite a different look between the two. So let me take compare off one moment. Bear with me. So we'll do the parabolic umbrella and then the octa. There we go, that's fine. Get the two correct files. There we go. So very, very similar in terms of how they look. Um, if we punch in on both of these, um, catch lights look very, very similar, okay? I would probably say that the octa, now if I give that one a value of two, it should be easier to spot. So the 150 centimeter octa here, I would say is a little fractionally more open, if anything, um, on the cheek here, compared to the umbrella um, there. Now, is that to do with the size? No. I'll come back over to camera. Let me just take that off. Pop that one back on screen. There we go. Um, what happens is when you have an extra inner, um, I'm going to say the word, baffle, <laughs> cracks it up. <laughs> anyway, um, you have the inner, extra inner diffuser or baffle within the Opta, um, it helps spread that light a little further. With the parabolic silver umbrella, whilst yes, it's large, the diffusion material helps soften the highlights um, versus having it bare, you still just get that hot spot bouncing back from the center of the umbrella because they're all somewhat focused. It's not a, a true para parabola, I can never say that word, um, but it is somewhat focused like most umbrellas are, especially when they're set up in reflective configuration. Um, so you see a slightly harder quality of light, but as you saw in Lightroom, there's not a massive amount in it. 
Now, what we'll do next is we'll keep rolling and I'm going to take the outer diffuser off of this 150 octa. Um, I'm not going to change the exposure of the camera or re-meter. We'll just see what difference it makes on output because we're removing some diffusion. Light doesn't have to pass through and we'll see what we get and we'll see the quality change. So here we go, Velcro noise. I'm sorry. Oh my word. Right. It's like aggressive. It's like, yeah, uh, it's like, oh, so noisy. So we'll bring this all the way down there. And it's fine, by the way, just to let it hang. It's not going to affect the, the quality of light or anything like that. It's out of the way. So we just have the inner baffle, sorry, <laughs> um, inside the softbox there. And let's see what we get with that one. Again, I'm still at F11. Uh, I'm at ISO 100, by the way, 160th of a second. Um, there's no ambient light recorded in any of these. Boom. There we go. And we'll come over to Lightroom. It'll come in in colour at first, and then when Adobe decides to work, there we go, it'll catch up. So it's got a little brighter, okay, there. Still a fairly soft quality of light, all right. Um, and I would say what's possibly happened there, if we compare the two, so that's with both of the panels fitted on the right, and on the left that's with the uh, outer diffuser removed so it gets slightly brighter and we've got more open shadows if anything um, because what will happen is as we remove this front diffuser we have a what is ultimately a silver reflector panel um, on this uh, right hand side of the octa okay so light will hit this and this cheek here will see that so it's a little bit more open so you can't, you don't always have to set a modifier up in the factory de facto way. You can remove the diffuser, remove the inner baffle, um, half cover it. You can point it at the subject, you can feather it off the subject and th there could be a whole series of videos on all of that stuff. So what we'll do next is we'll take the inner baffle out and then what we'll do um, for a last one is we will um, bring in the silver parabolic again uh, and I'll take this all the way out. Uh, Velcro, Velcro's winning. Um, and we'll take the cover off the silver parabolic. Um, so it's purely just the umbrella. And you'll see that will be more brighter. There'll be more specular highlights. That's certainly what I would expect in my experience, but we'll see. So we've got inner baffle removed. So essentially we have a hard light surrounded by multiple reflective panels now inside this octa, um, which will open up some of the shadows. So let's see. You know, how much does it increase contrast? So, here we go. Oh, great. Looking straight at the sign. Thank you. Oh. Beep. Uh, so, that's the new one there. Let me come off compare. Let's go on to this one. Wait for Lightroom to convert it to black and white. There it is, eventually. Wow. All right. So if we have a look at this one here, look at the shadow here, okay? As soon as we remove that um, inner baffle, so we have the inner baffle here still in place on the right. Look at the catch light of the eyes. It's more diffused, the highlight, softer, more specular here, okay? And a harder shadow line on the left on the neck there, although not as hard as the bare direct light we had uh, that we first shot. And so you can start to see with this one modifier, okay, you can get um, quite a varied um, range of qualities of light. So we don't have to use it with the baffle, with the diffuser. You could, of course, leave the baffle out, use it with the diffuser. And um, so then it's, it's in some ways, starting to go similar to the umbrella setup, although that's a fired into the back of the light versus through the modifier itself. So there's all of these things that you can do with these modifiers to experiment and see what the difference is. Um, and also try with your own modifiers. Shoot some images in black and white like we're doing here. So you see highlight, mid-tone and shadow. You're not distracted by anything else. Look at the quality of light on the face, on the clothing, on the body, if it's a stud portrait, seated, what have you and see what it does on the background as well. So let's switch back to the silver umbrella and we'll do a last one. Um, oh, or do we do the grid? 
Should we do the grid with this? Let's do the grid. Let's do the grid. Okay, let's do the grid. So, now on, we'll keep this rolling. So, my videos tend to be quite long, as the editors at Pixar Pro will probably tell you. Um, so, here we go. So, let's pop the grid on, onto this. So, we'll put the inner baffle back in. Okay. Now, yes, you could fit the grid with the baffle out, and it's going to be hard light, and the shadows, the hard light shadows uh, that hits the grid will cast the grid pattern shadow. Um, man, there's loads of things you can do. Anyway, if you want some more videos on this stuff, um, let me know, and we'll sort those out. Um, otherwise, this video will be three hours long. Right, so, let's pop this back on. And you're going to watch me fight with Velcro now. Not so much live on camera, because I can edit the bad stuff out, I suppose, but uh, although I won't do. Right, we'll put all this on. ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> edit it so there's a video of you only putting the Velcro on and off. <laughs> could do, could do. Um, now, um, tip, when you're dealing with Velcro modifiers, don't, I mean, I'm not wearing one at the moment, but don't wear a woolly jumper because you'll just end up fighting with it, especially with the grid. So, let me grab the grid. Oh, come over here. And... Here it is. Here it is, here it is, here it is. Now, this is brand new, opened last night. Um, and we'll just stick this in as best we can. Okay. Um, the grid material is really well made. Um, it adds quite a bit of weight to the modifier. So just heads up when you start hanging the grids on here. Um, you know, if you've not tightened down the the bracket on your light tight enough, it may start to droop um, potentially because you're adding more front heavy weight to it. And we will get this fitted here. Now, um, with this grid, obviously it comes a bit of an advantage over the umbrella because the umbrella itself doesn't have a grid um, it actually doesn't come with one so okay that's one for the octa um, why is it creaking anyway so what I'm going to do now because I've added the grid um, I'm going to keep the distance the same I am just going to turn it slightly because what the grid does is it affects the angle of light that can be seen okay so I want to make sure that light does actually hit you not the light hitting you, but, but you know, anyway, because that, that would be very bad. That would be very bad. No, no, let's not do that. And we'll see what we get. Now, I'm not going to change the exposure, so let's see. So here we are, 150 octa with inner baffle, outer diffuser, and the kinky. <laughs> oh, I missed the laugh. Ah, oh, there we go. There's a smile. There we go. Right. <laughs> Joe, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to take a. <laughs> A straight face one, you ready? Mm -hmm. You got this? Okay, here we go. Right. Cool, thank you. <laughs> now, we can see quite a dramatic change um, in the exposure. Okay. Um, as expected um, from the previous image, we added an, the inner baffle, one layer of diffusion, we added the outer, and we've added the grid, so each element that you add to the light will eat a little bit of the output. Um, unfortunately, now when you've got a 600 watt head, like the 600 um, Pro there, it's fine because we can increase the power. So we'll do that just to match good exposure at f11, and we'll meter it, and then we'll have a look at the drama that the grid creates. And actually, if we come into Lightroom just for a moment, this is obviously an underexposed shot at the moment. It's not too bad, um, but we can see it maintains a soft quality on the highlights, um, but we get a bit more drama because it controls the angle of the light, which is kind of cool. But again, we'll meter this at f11. Let's get it done. And I'm going to guess that we'll go up two thirds. Boom, f8 and 8 tenths. f8 and 8 tenths, nearly. Go up two more tenths. Nice thing about these lights is you can go up in little increments of one tenth stop. Pop, you can hear that now. Okay, F11. So we're back to the same exposure and we'll show you what this looks like in Lightroom. So, okay, just looking, well, you can't see the sign, but anyway, towards where that sign would be. <laughs> Here we go. Good. Beautiful work. Oh, and again, it's a fashion shoot. I'm heavy on the trigger. There we go. 
that was where the light didn't fire, and that's where it did. There we go. And Lightroom converts it to black and white, and we'll punch in. So we still, we retain the soft quality of light. Okay, I'm trying to look. <laughs> <laughs> you retain the soft quality of light um, on the subject, you know, open shadow on the cheek, okay? Um, soft spread highlights on the skin. Um, you can see the highlight in the eye is still quite diffused and spread, but we gain contrast because we take away light from certain areas based on the angle of the grid. So there'll be certain parts of the background that will see less light, I'm just gonna stand behind you for a moment, that will see less light purely because of the angle of the grid. So here it gets darker at this corner because it goes dark on that side of the box. And that's how grids work. So advantage to the Okta there on that one. Um, I've said this before in other videos, folks, when you're working with someone that you just met, male photographer, female, client, subject, let them know what you're doing and why when they're on set. Don't just walk behind them, okay? Keep it cool. So uh, what we'll do is we'll change out to the umbrella for the last one, all right? And we'll shoot that no diffuser, bare silver umbrella, okay? And we'll see what that looks like. Okay, for the last one, guys, so we saw a range of comparisons with the Okta, with the grid, um, with the inner and outer baffle removed, with just the inner baffle um, as well. And we saw when we first started after the hard light shot, the silver parabolic umbrella, the 160 centimeter, 63 inch, um, with the diffusion cover on. Now, what we have here is the diffusion cover off. So this is now just a silver bounce umbrella although admittedly quite a large one. Now, if we look, you can probably see it's a fairly deep umbrella. Um, and this is where the focus nature of it comes. It's not a true parabola or a parabolic modifier, although it is parabolic in nature. Most umbrellas are as they focus light. If you look at um, true parabolic modifiers, Pixel Pro have got a new range coming in. They are a very particular shape made to a, a mathematical equation for that shape to make the light rays as straight as possible. Very, very cool modifiers. Anyway, I'm rambling. Told you I ramble. <laughs> Shocking. So we'll oh, see. Um, so we've got the City 600 Pro. I've put the reflector back on, the standard reflector, just to corral the light a little bit. I've made sure it fills the umbrella um, and you can do that by moving the umbrella shaft further through the mount or you know further away or closer just to concentrate that light that's within there. If we have it uncovered without this reflector on, we have a bare bulb situation, and if um, areas can see that bare bulb at the top, then we will get a hard light spill onto the set, um, which we don't want because we want to see what the quality of light is from this, not this plus a little bit of a hard light. So let's see what we get. We should be at f11, okay. And we are on the camera. Good, just looking that way. Good, thank you very much. Boom, there we go. We've had to dial the power down a lot because when I took the meter reading at first, it was f22 and 7 tenths. Boom, there we go. Okay, and here we have the parabolic umbrella without the diffuser. So a little bit more contrast, still nice diffused, probably a little brighter on the highlights, okay, in there, but a very, very nice quality of light still. Um, and as you can see, these do start to look quite similar. Now, if we Go back to, let's see, the parabolic diffuser um, there with the diffusion panel on and now with it off, okay. Um, what we'll do is we'll grab the parabolic with diffuser there and the parabolic without diffuser there, okay. And if we punch in on these, come on Lightroom, we can see a little bit more contrast okay on the parabolic reflector or a parabolic sorry umbrella without the diffuser there darker shadows on the cheek versus here now um, we can also see a dramatic difference on the background when we look at these two and i'll come back onto set there we go so see in an ideal world i'd have someone manning the laptop and labeling them but yeah um so we can see a darker dramatic look okay on the background because this is now a more focused light okay as a result versus it all filling the umbrella and then just coming back through washing over the background okay and areas as well so again a different look um, it's a cool look um, you can 
choke the umbrella shaft um, further to get more drama as well. So it has it has options. Come on then, all right, we'll do it. Now I've said it. Here we go. So we'll bring this in further. Okay. Now this is changing the distance, and we're going to see an influence of shadow on the background possibly. But go on, we'll run it. Um, let's see what we get. So let me kick out of Lightroom here. Um, kick out of Compare, and we will. Now it's the parabolic umbrella um, choked in, and it is now in the shot. Sorry, you're being upstaged by the umbrella. <laughs> and we'll grab the shot, there we go. Perfect. Boom. There. Okay, so we can go between the two. And we can see very, very easily which is which. Okay, it changes where the focus of the light is hitting on the background. Okay, and if we zoom in on both, um, we start to see, uh, let's see, not much difference in the shadows, but more so where it hits on the background because the umbrella side, if I come back over here, on, excuse me, come behind here again, um, the umbrella side here is casting a shadow or cutting some light from this side of the background. So you've got a load of options really that you've, you can do, a uh, load of things you can do with these kind of modifiers. And I urge you to grab whatever modifiers you have, even if you just focus on you know, one individually, so do them you know, one by one, uh, book a model, book Aries, <laughs> okay? Um, and just sit and just parade modifiers at different distances and different looks with the diffuser, without the diffuser, with the inner baffle, with the grid, without the grid. Do all of that to see the difference across these, okay? Get to know the modifiers so you pull it out of the bag, place it, set it up, and you know what it's going to look like before you take the first frame. That's the ideal, and it just takes repetition and practice. Okay, so hopefully this has been informative. Um, if you've got any questions, do drop them in the comments below. I appreciate it's a longer form video. Again, mine usually do. Waffle, anyway. <laughs> waffle, waffle. Um, but um, I'd, I'd like to try and include as much information as possible. And in my opinion, on lighting stuff, it, it's hard just to kind of skim over a lot of stuff because there's a lot of little nuances and changes and you make a move of a light, you change how a modifier is rigged, it changes the quality and that kind of needs explaining as well. So it takes a bit of time. But any questions that you've got, drop them in the comments below. If you'd like to see other videos um, comparing particular modifiers or modifiers used in a certain way, let me know. I can pitch the idea to Pixar Pro. We'll see if we can come up with a video for you. Um, thank you very much for watching. I've been Rick Bradbury. I've been Aris Hey, there we go. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, have a good day, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Winner? Okay, right. God, waffle, 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 waffle. <laughs> waffle, waffle, waffle.